104.7 The K, Mike the intern in the studio with Jay Stevens. Shh. It is I shot up like a professional fade. Hey, we you know what? We actually have the camera on this time. Uh, we're using the mic. microphone. We know what we're doing, Thanks. and this is dark side of the street. Well, using radio, I know what to do finally. Episode number 50. Four. That's a lot of do- that's a lot of hours What's of documentary. Lot of damn documentaries Some of these documentaries watched, are dude. like eight hours long. I know. Some of them are multiple episodes and movies, and we've watched a lot. We've learned a lot. And this week we learned about the life and people. deaths of Robert Durst. And uh the documentary is called The Jinx on HBO. I actually I think I'd heard about Robert Durst, but for some reason I never watched this documentary. I didn't really know anything about it until <laughs> We were right before we did the episode last week and I go, it was my turn for this week. So this was my pick. And I go, and it was, he was in the news because he just got convicted for the murder of the second person he was allegedly involved in killing. And we'll get into how this went down, but yeah, it just went right past me. I didn't watch it. I found out about it because of this uh, spoiler alert of him confessing basically to himself and laughing about it in the mirror while he was still mic'd up. That's how I, that's so why I kind of backtracked this whole thing. Cause I heard first about this documentary and he, in the final episode, he outs himself. He confesses he outs himself, but didn't know he was mic'd, but he wasn't in the courtroom. So it's like, well, you know, but. funny thing about that is they foreshadow that early in the show. And it's like episode one or two. When he's doing his, because he he didn't give interviews at all. He finally gets his filmmakers like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll sit down and talk with you about it. You know, it's an ego thing. So finally, he gets with this guy, and his lawyers obviously there throughout the interview. And at one point, they stop recording, but he keeps talking. And his lawyer walks over to him and goes, "Robert, Bob, your your oh, mic's still on. Stop talking. Your your mic's still on. It's still hot. Oh, it is." Then after they come back for a second interview, which we'll get to. He outs himself. Uh, this tells a story of a man a who, troubled man. At one point, I think he told a lawyer, I've been a rich boy my whole life, but I've never been happy. He's a psycho. He's a psychopath. Very weird character. Um, Very weird uh, backstory. Raised with a lot of money. Durst family, one of the most powerful families in all of New York City. Rich. I mean, you couldn't even begin to imagine how much money this family has. And in, and if you look at just Robert Durst, who really hadn't been with the company since like the early '90s, and how much money he has without actually ever having to do anything, uh, it blows my mind. So the documentary actually kind of freaked my wife out because we're watching it, and it starts off with the discovery of a dismembered body in the Galveston Bay, and they trace it back to a man who was actually the neighbor of what they thought was a mute woman who at first they kind of make jokes about how she wasn't the best looking woman in the world and come to find out that was none other than fred durst who was on the run or not fred, fred, fred durst. durst no oh, turn your hat durst. around and you can no, say no, fred no, durst. Gonna do turn that. your head around once Cannot and you can say fred i knew durst. i was gonna do that before we did this. turn your head around and you can robert do it all durst. for the nookie i'm not gonna do it robert durst and he had basically been on the run um and he was trying to hide out because he, they were bringing up uh an investigation into the disappearance of his first wife and then lo and behold one of his best friends who may knew may have known something about that situation was found dead in her apartment in LA from a execution Crazy style man, gunshot right? and this guy decided to go on the lam just dr- dressed up as a woman until I guess he became comfortable with this neighbor who probably then found out who he was. The neighbor was probably trying to get some and then they news. realized he was a dude. And then, well, I have to cut you into pieces now. It's it's really, really bad news. And uh, yeah, that's probably what happened to the third that we know of victim of Robert Bob Durst. We're talking the jinx. This is Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7 The K.
104.7 The K, Mike the Intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio. It is Dark Side of the Stream, and we are discussing the jinx, the life and deaths of Robert Durst. And we mentioned how this thing kicks off in a big way. They find this dismembered body in the Galveston Bay. Cut into pieces, man. Yeah, like... cut. it was very much dismembered. Uh, I don't think they even found the head, though. I don't think they ever found the head. They found no. everything but the head. The, I mean, the police guy says that he reaches down and he had to put, like, you know when you have a turkey that you're going to cook and the, the neck's lopped off and you're, you put your hand inside of it to lift it out of the sink? This guy said he put his hand down the chest of this body to pull this torso up, just the torso, but he had to put his hand down there and grab the chest bones. He just was cool with that. He what just a did bit. that. Thank you, Jay, for uh, like turkey, ruining right? literally every person that listens like is turkey. listening right now. Happy the, Thanksgiving, the, guys. Yeah, yeah not Hopefully only we, Thanksgiving. Let's air this again on, on Black uh, um, on Black Wednesday yeah, or whatever yeah, that day is. On Black <laughs> Wednesday, we're first we're gonna we're gonna invent a day called Black Wednesday, and then we're gonna air this on Black <laughs> Wednesday. Um, that is disgusting. And yes, like I mentioned in the last break, my wife literally at the beginning was like, "I can't watch this." this is, yeah. And we watch a lot of true crime stuff. I was kind of surprised. It's, by yeah. That. It's, so they trail back to this uh, this mute woman, turn, come to find out it's Robert Durst, and he goes on the run, shaves his head, shaves his eyebrows. He's on the yeah, lam for a long time. If you shave your eyebrows, while. then you won't draw attention well, to yourself. He, he, in the interview, he goes, that just, you know, he was like, well, I was on, he's like, I was unrecognizable, couldn't re- have a beard because I'd had a beard. You know, I couldn't grow my hair out. I needed to do something like that, that was now, which his solution was shave the head and the eyebrows. He went the women, woman route. That didn't work. So then he went the bald route. And went the salamander route. This is how he got busted. Stealing a hoagie. Now, the man had over $500 in cash in his pocket. He had over $30,000 in suitcases and in probably his trunk. millions acts to well yeah out, but know? at the time i mean he had five he had a roll of five 500 so 500 in his sandwich? pocket why you steal so sandwich? he steals a sandwich he why he did that i think this guy wanted to get caught maybe, all right, right well that or maybe it was just to test it maybe he just feels maybe like just he doesn't idiot he doesn't follow the same rules as everybody else because he's uh, the first like child mike the intern oh like mike the intern yeah right I wish. I like listen, he's the first he's the firstborn trust fund baby. Never had to follow Those the trust rules. Trust fund like. babies kind of don't follow the rules for the most part. And he times. obviously felt like he was above everyone. And I want to bring this home because at some point when they're talking about his first wife, he's talking about how he had to sit at dinner with her family and they were like, you know, simpletons. And his her mom wanted to talk to him about canning she was into yankee ma- magazine and like you know what what home you know homemakers were into canning stuff and he had to sit there and talk to her about canning and it just made him he was just couldn't believe that he had to sit there and talk to this woman about canning vegetables when he's he's bob durst who, who what, what's canning vegetables i don't care about that i don't want to sit here and talk to you about that first of all you're a garbage human being if you at your point in any life, I don't care if you're Mike the intern, you're Jay Stevens, you're J- Bob Durst, whatever. If someone comes up to you and starts talking to you about something that they get joy out of, they get excitement out of, I don't care Embrace if it. it literally sit there, Embrace engage it. them, let them tell you about it. You might learn something first off. Second of all, be a human being to someone else. If yeah. it makes them happy, give them the time of day. What the, the hell is uh, wrong with you? Currently right now, the missus is taking handstand workshop classes Wednesdays and Sundays to learn how to do handstands. To learn how to do handstands. That's badass. I would never do that. I embrace but I still it. think your that's bad. Your handstands. Am I going to take a handstand class? Probably not. But if you're into the handstands, I just don't understand it, it. But that's right down. out of the gate. And then that's in an early episode of the series. You're just like, what a dirt bag. I mean, obviously he was a dirt bag, but um, obviously it had a lot of things going on. He obviously had a lot of things going on. So, we're going to talk about the uh, disappearance of his first wife, uh, what happened to his uh, friend in the next segment, the jinx on this episode of Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7. The- the K, Mike the intern, Jay Stevens in the studio. It is Dark Side of the Stream. Today discussing the jinx, the life and deaths of Robert Durst. So the first thing that he allegedly was involved in was the disappearance of his first wife, who he claimed had been at a party. She'd been drinking. She came home. They were in bad times. They were arguing. She wanted to drive to their apartment in Manhattan. He's like, no, you've been drinking. I'm not going to take you there, but I'll take you to the train station. 
So he takes her, drops her off at the train station one o'clock. Random rats. According random to the police right report, night, really? which we'll get to this in a minute, the doorman said, at, or at least in the report, he told them that that he saw her go into the apartment. Later on, when the detectives or the private investigators that actually did the work went and talked to the doorman again, who then said, I never saw her go into the apartment. Ooh. So I don't know where the cops got that. Well, very rich family in new york is probably where they got that and then and it's nypd come on and then a phone call was made the next day from a woman she was in college at the time fred's first or uh, robert's first wife fred's first wife was in college she it was claimed that she called and said i'm not going to be in today i'm feeling ill so there right there is the alibi that Bob Durst is not involved because how could he have killed that her? Was him, he was all man. the way that out was there. Him. Again, it was a woman. That was and him. you still can't. No, no, no. It wasn't him. More than likely, it was his friend who was the daughter of a mob boss in Las Vegas who made that phone call on his behalf to protect him from getting involved. He probably said, hey, I don't know where she is. They're going to think I did it. You need to call her, her teacher and get me out of this. Well, then everything was cool because they believed that she just disappeared on her own. They don't know where she went. He was not even close by. That's his alibi. And then him and Susan Berman, who this friend is, continue to be friends. Everything's cool. She starts falling on hard times. It's obvious through their correspondence that he's been paying her all these years. 20 grand, 30 grand. Well, eventually the investigation into his first wife's disappearance comes back up. He freaks out. He's a paranoid individual. I'm sure Susan probably said, hey, you know, I've been here for you. I'm having hard times. And once that, oh, they're about they're about ready to talk to me again about this. I probably need some money to be Someone took a flight to Los Angeles and off her. And I guarantee you that man allegedly was Bob Durst. Well, we'll get to that in a second. So after that happens, he goes on the run. Neighbor finds out who he is. Kills that dude. Goes on the run again. Gets busted. Gets Arrested, sent back to Texas. They acquit him under the self-defense argument. Money, that's how. In this United States American justice system, it's guilty until proven innocent if you're just a regular old Joe like Jay and I. Sorry, Joe. Or if you got money. money, Like OJ? Dude. Sky's the limit, man. And he got off. Well, that was the time period they started making this documentary. And the guy who did this documentary actually did some detective work. Come to find out, Susan Berman had a boy. And that boy actually became friends with Robert Durst, even defending him, saying there's no way he could have killed my mother. They were too, I knew how she felt about him. Yeah. I knew how I felt about her. There's no way. We'll come to find out after he's going through his belongings, finds a letter that Robert Durst had mailed to his mother. And what was interesting is that letter, the handwriting, and the misspelling of the word Beverly were also in the same note that the alleged killer who killed Susan Berman had mailed to the police to say there was a dead body, it's which like used a, the term cadaver. It's like a mystery movie, man. He comes out and the filmmakers discover this. So obviously they have to give it to the police. But before they do that, they actually convince Bob Durst to come in for a second interview. And while they do that, they show him this stuff. He starts burping while they confront him because it's obviously he's just like, oh, he's shook by it because he's like, oh, my God, I'm screwed. He starts burping while he's like, well, yeah, I guess you could see how the cops would figure this out. But yeah, I, very, very weird. It, dude, it's right? a weird reaction. Uh, see, also, there's an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia that does a spoof of this situation. And it's hilarious because Danny DeVito plays like the Robert Durst character in it. And it's it's. It's comedic. Genius. Oh, now I want to see that. Uh, it's it's uh, making a murder. Dennis Reynolds episode. It's so damn funny. Anyway, after this is over and they confront him, they're like, "Okay, well, that's it." Well, he goes to the bathroom, keeps the mic on, it keeps recording, and he basically says, "What have you done? What the hell did you do?" And killed then re- all, I killed I killed them all, of course. And that's how it ends. And this was in 2015. He admits Ooh. to it. That's well. Originally, I think they were supposed to get to court in 2019. COVID didn't happen. Then COVID, COVID happened, and then they just convicted him of killing Susan Berman. 
based on this evidence. And uh, it just goes to show you, they elongated to- another six years after this happened. Shout out to the filmmaker, um, though. For- but yeah, shout out to the filmmakers Brandon, for doing Brandon. it. Shout street, out to street the, justice. Shout street out justice. to the detectives that actually did their job and got this done. And no, non shout to get, out to the other detectives. Yeah, just, maybe you know, it's a Durst family. Make it go away. Well, we don't do that in this country. Sometimes justice will be served. This is Dark Side of the Stream on one hundred four point seven. One hundred four point seven, the cave. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio. This is Dark Side of the Stream, episode number fifty-eight, and we are discussing the jinx from Robert Durst. Well, how many body lop, chopped off body parts? How many dismembered body parts would I give this? At least a solid four, um, because I thought the when you can solve or help yeah, solve a crime, well, yeah, that's that gives it a bonus, bonus body part for you that. You get an A, maybe not an A plus, uh, because I felt like sometimes it was a little bit. There it were got parts a, that were little a little milked, out. a little milked out. I and, felt and the so I was going to go three, was but I do himself. agree with the bonus body part for uh, the crime getting solved. Yeah, four four body parts for four, sure. So two arms and two parts. legs on this one. Two arms and two legs. I'll give it one torso with my hand in it, like a turkey. You Hold can just it up make high. Them dance. Let me see your torso Let in the air. <laughs> oh my God. Your torsos around, guys. So yeah, Robert Durst convicted of uh, nice. killing of uh, Susan Berman. Oh, um, gosh, hopefully one me? day they will actually be able to convict him of the uh, alleged missing uh, disappearance of his first wife. He's a garbage human being. Um, it's what I've always said about uh, money and power, that if you're rotten on the inside, money and power just exasperates that. If you're a good person on the inside, well, that will exasperate it too. Uh, more times than not, though, uh, trust fund firstborn babies uh, that are the, you know, the the kings, the yeah, patriarchs or in, in making, if you will, end up becoming pretty damn rotten. And he was a rotten individual. I'm sure that he wants to blame the apparent suicide of his first mom on that. But you know what? People go through worse and they come out on top. You can't blame your past on your future. You are having control. You're a garbage human being. You could have actually done some good in this world, Robert Durst, but you didn't. You killed people and you suck. So that is how I feel about that and trust fund babies across the world. Jay, your turn uh, for the next documentary. since you went throwback on this one, I might go throwback on this one too. Have you ever watched Exit Through the Gift Shop? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. About Banksy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think maybe Man, people, we're gonna go back to we're going a, way back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk Exit about Banksy. through the gift shop. I actually have a Banksy tattoo on my leg, and Ooh, we can yeah. I can show everyone right. on our stream on Facebook. Exit through the gift shop will make you question what art is. It's a really good documentary, Great and documentary. he is right. Um, what art is, uh, and uh, the amount of money people p- will pay. And it's a throwback. You got to dig yeah. for it. I think it's, it's on Netflix. But yeah, you dig I, for I think it. it's or it's it's got to be. Somewhere. It's not going to be in your now current no, top no, ten. No, no, uh, Exit through the gift shop. It's a great documentary about. Uh, like I said, I have a tattoo. For It'll this make artist. you question everything. Actually, yep. even if the documentary is real. Stream this on Facebook every Friday at nine. You can download it as a podcast on your one hundred four point seven The Cave app. This is Jay Stevens and Mike, the intern, saying so long. Dark side of the stream. Keep Think watching. Think about me when you put your hand in that turkey. I don't even know where to start. It's 104.7. The K-